All right, so I think I have figured out what was wrong with the speedometer, and it was what I was hoping it wasn't. So there's about three things that, well, there is three things that can go wrong. The speedometer cable here connects in here to the wheel, and as the wheel spins, it's going to turn a, well, it's like a rod through this wire, through this cable, and that square tip will connect into the gauge cluster. Now this cable can go bad, the rod inside can break, and that's a real easy fix, just replace the cable. The piece inside the wheel, it's a gear that spins with the wheel, that could have failed or been incorrect somehow, and that's not the case, because when I roll the bike back and forth, this rod spins as expected. So I took apart the gauge cluster, which is really, really basic, and uh, it's kind of interesting to see it. So these are the pieces. The gauge cluster itself is real simple. Basically, this is just the ignition on here, and on here, there's just four lights for neutral, high beams, oil lamp, and, uh, well, turn signals. The other piece, after taking off the plate, is this mechanism, which is really kind of neat. Uh, one of my worries about the bike was that I didn't know exactly how many miles were on it because I didn't know how the speedometer kind of worked, and if the speedometer wasn't working, that the odometer wouldn't work. But the odometer is a completely separate system than the speedometer. Uh, I can see this thing isn't right. So it's interesting how this works is you're going to have this cup here. This is a cable from another bike, and you can see it's got that square tip. So what I'm gonna do, simulate it with this little bit. When I put this inside and spin, this cup here will spin with it. Now, inside of it, there's a rotating magnet as well. These two should be separated by an air gap. Now this is magnetized, as is this. So as this spins, the other one should move with it, but not like it's doing. They shouldn't be touching. However, it creates eddy currents inside of it, and so given enough time, the inside one will match its speed. But it's held in place by a small spring inside of there, that black coiled up spring. So that's gonna provide it some resistance, so that's what's going to bring this dial to where your speed is at. The faster it spins, the further over the spring tension is going to be, and it'll give me a, a readout. This whole thing, though, as I'm seeing it, is all out of alignment. Now, it might be tough to see here, but where's my little pointer? Let's see if I can point this out. If you see, this here is completely out of alignment with this cup, and on the other side, you don't see it at all. When I look, this entire thing looks off kilter, and when I spin, the speed cap around it, it shouldn't move the whole thing, yet it is. So that is why this thing goes all wonky. This shouldn't be spinning like this. It's touching and it shouldn't be. I can't figure out how to straighten it. What sucks is I can't figure out how to buy just this piece. Uh, so it's like a hundred bucks for this whole replacement and uh, uh, it's something I'm gonna have to deal with. That being said, I'm going to point out one more thing, how the odometer works on here, which is really neat. <clears throat> so the other thing that's happening when this drive is spinning is on the inside, there's a set of threads right there. Okay, These threads are spinning this plastic rod, this pink one with gears on it. Okay, So as I turn this, that rod is spinning and it is turning this rod here, which in turn is spinning another gear, and sorry, 
is spinning another gear inside of it, which ultimately is turning this gear. And this controls my numbers on the odometer. So that's a completely independent system that will continue to work despite the eddy current speedometer not working. The odometer, my worries, I don't need to worry, uh, is that is the actual mileage of the bike. I just quick looked, I know I have another broken speedometer from an FZR and I was like, hey, maybe I could just pull that bad boy out and throw it in there. And then I realized I'm an idiot because this has a trip odometer on it and, you know, the full bike odometer. So. I'm going to end up buying a whole new gauge cluster unless I can figure out where to buy one of these little things. So that sucks, but it's cool to pull it off and figure out how these things actually worked. And to, if nothing else, I know that the true mileage of the bike is that. Unless somebody else came in here and just started flipping around the numbers. All right, thanks.